वीडियो इज अबाउट आई यू एफ टी केस सीनैरियो फॉर ऑस्की एंड टोक्स एग्जाम केस सीनैरियो ट्वेंटी नाइन ईयर्स ओल्ड पेशेंट ग्रेविटी टू पैरावन प्रीवियस वन सीजेरियन सेक्शन प्रेजेंटेड एट थर्टी सिक्स वीक्स ऑफ जेस्टेशन विद अ कंप्लेन ऑफ सडन लॉस ऑफ फीटल मूवमेंट हाउ वुड यू मैनेज हर इट्स अ स्ट्रक्चर डिस्कशन सो आफ्टर म्यूचुअल इंट्रोडक्शन रेपर बिल्डिंग कन्फर्म द डेटा गिवन इन द सीनैरियो एंड कन्फर्म द डिटेल गिवन ask those questions related to bio data which are not mentioned in the scenario ask about name of the patient the age because advanced maternal age is a risk factor education occupation duration of marriage parity because previous iod is a risk factor last menstrual period the menstrual regularity then take the detailed history whether it was planned or unplanned pregnancy was dating scan done or not was that a uh, single ton or multiple pregnancy anomaly scan in this pregnancy and any anomaly or hair drops shown on that anomaly scan any complaint of bleeding pain discharge in this pregnancy when did she start no- noticing the decreased fetal movement was uh, that first episode or recurrent any testing like nickel translucency genetic testing for any implied done or not any scan done or not any abnormality like cord around neck or anything else told to her or not the differential diagnosis of patient with iuft include first of all heat intolerance which shows that maybe this patient has got hyperthyroidism cold intolerance indicate hypothyroidism excessive thirst hunger excessive urination is in diabetes mellitus raised hypertension in patient with previous history of hypertension previous or current the joint pain skin rash and fever indicate acid for torch ask about skin rash and fever another important differential diagnosis is sepsis in which patient may complain of fever shortness of breath or uh, the source of sepsis in any part of the body the symptoms of shortness of breath and easy fatigability are there in anemia as well and history of clot anywhere in the body or shortness of breath or previous history of recurrent miscarriages may indicate APLS which is not present in this case we have to focus on the specific case given in the scenario but yes uh, second trimester iud due to any placental cause may indicate APLS which may fit in this scenario as well so we have to ask question we have to rule out inherited thrombophilia as well by asking about history of clot anywhere in the body or family history of thrombophilia any growth restriction on scan may indicate the iugr history of trauma history of trauma is also very important cause of iuft then take the detail of static history ask about the mode of the previous delivery which is c section in this case any antenatal and postpartum complications or postnatal complication what were the sizes of the baby any instrumentations are done or not was it prolonged a prolonged labor or of normal duration any episiotomy done or not then ask the routine gynecological history the medical history of uh, hypertension and diabetes which is important in this case the surgical history the personal history of the smoking or social deprivation family history of any congenital anomaly and the drug history any drug misuse any drug allergy then one what investigations have been done so far what management has been done so far then comes the examination of the patient do complete general physical examination including the vital uh, especially check the bmi as maternal obesity is a risk factor for iud do complete systemic examination uh, in the per abdominal examination do inspection palpation for estimated fetal weight the lie the liker the presentation of the baby because all of these things help in uh, the management of this patient the fetal cardiac activity is it present or not then come the investigations in which first of all we do the baseline investigation which include blood group and rh factor complete blood blood picture including hemoglobin total leukocyte count and platelets count the blood sugar random the hepatitis profile hps antigen plus anti hcv plus anti hiv antibody the urine routine examination crp is also very important test to rule out infections we do coagulation profile in this case which include pt aptt and inr 
If patient is diabetic, we will do HbA1c test as well. A very important investigation is that of the fetal ultrasound for fetal viability and signs like Spalding sign, Robert sign and the Ball sign. So Spalding sign is overlapping of the fetal cranial bones at the sutures after uh, fetal death in the uterus. Robert sign, it is seen in the fetal death in the uterus, the presence of the gas shadows within the heart or greater vessels in cases of the fetal death in utero. And it is seen one to two days after the death and may be seen as early as 12 hours. Next is that of the ball sign of IUFT. The ball sign refers to a fetus body appearing curled into ball or extreme hyperflexion which is a finding associated with fetal demise. So in the management, first of all debrief the patient regarding the diagnosis, the complications and the plan of the management. We should have sympathetic approach toward the patient involved MDT including the psychiatrist and explain the different complications like DIC, psychological sequelae and other complications depending upon the disease of the patient. We have three management options which include expectant management, the medical management and surgical management. So we have to give all these three choices to the patient and um, after discussion with her and depending upon her overall case scenario we have to plan one management. If patient opts for expectant management tell that 80 85% of the patient go uh, in spontaneous labor. Meanwhile, we will do two weekly clotting profile. If patient opts for uh, SVD, uh, do assessment of the live presentation and size of the fetus to rule out any contraindication to vaginal delivery. Do Bishop score. If Bishop score is poor, go for induction of the labor. If Bishop score is more than six, give infusion syntocinone if it is less than six then uh, plan um, placing the glandin e2 or misoprostol once the baby is delivered do appropriate inspection of the baby for any placenta involved any cord around the neck any maceration to check whether fresh or old iod is there any peeling of the skin and any anomalies in the fetus if patient permit we can go for autopsy as well to stop lactation, advise bromocriptine. Dose is 1.25 to 2.5 mg once a day. Increase the dose to 2.5 mg 2 to 7 days as needed. However, the dose is usually not more than 15 mg per day. Early mobilization and avoidance of dehydration is advised to the patient. After complete management, patient is discharged and called for follow-up after 6 weeks. So that was all about IUFT case scenario. If you have any comment, write in the comment section and follow the Facebook page of On and Up Ops and Gaini.